Hey everybody, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good evening to you. I'm going to give you a full tropical update. I'm going to try and be as quick as I can for this, so I apologize if I start speaking too quick. Uh, this is PowerOutage.us. Remember, you can go here and check for power outages in your area. It does update every 10 minutes. The good news is Florida only has 1,200. Out of all that storm and all that flooding that's been going on, there is 500 in Alabama. There's 700 in Mississippi, and there's still over 70,000 in Louisiana. But like I said, if you click on it, it will show you what county, it'll show you what company is working on it and everything. It's good information to have, so please go check it out if you need to know that information. Now the update is out for the 8 p.m. Sally is moving at 60 miles per hour, uh, winds that is, uh, 9 miles per hour west-northwest. And then we also have the Tropical Depression 20 over here. It's at 1,006 millibars. It's moving 35 miles per hour. I'm showing at Tropical Depression 20. We're not going to have any issues with, guys, because I, I will show you in a second. But Paulette is actually going to help out with that. So let's get into what we have uh, for Paulette. Now, Paulette is going over to Bermuda, and you can clearly see that these winds are going to be 90 miles per hour. Tropical storm, hurricane force winds going straight over Bermuda. So God bless you, Bermuda. I know you all used to high winds over there, but this is going to be a crazy setting you all going to have. It's going to literally go right over you. Then it's going to curve out to the Atlantic Ocean and be gone, thank God. But hang tight, Bermuda. I know y'all be okay. I know y'all can do this. Shortly after it leaves Bermuda, because it's going to be a hurricane, it's going to be a major after that, which is a Cat 3 hurricane by 2 a.m. on Tuesday, and then downgrade again on Wednesday to a regular hurricane and go out and be a tropical storm. Now, Bermuda, you are in the hurricane warnings. Just be aware that you are obviously in a hurricane warning. That's a pretty obvious one right there. Now, Sally, this is a new update on your tropical storm force winds. Uh, all the purple right here, which is the edge of Louisiana a little bit, is 90 miles per hour winds. I will show you a better view of this in just in a second. Uh, this dark maroon here is 80, which is a part, uh, lower part of, of uh, Louisiana, West Bank and whatnot. Now, the red right here is the 70 miles per hour winds. You still have a lot of winds that's affecting Mississippi and a little bit of Alabama. But the 60 miles an hour winds is affecting everybody. And as it goes, it just gets worse and worse. So it's covering a lot of the states. Now, this is your storm surge uh, potential that you're going to get. Okay, to let you know where your area is. Now, your, your colors here, your blue. If you're in the blue, you got one foot above ground. So if you're 10 feet below sea level, it's something else to think about. But yellow is greater than three feet. Orange is greater than 6 feet, and red is greater than 9 feet. Now, let me back it up so you can see everything. You can see all the, uh, this is going to be the, your, your storm surge that you're going to get from Sally. Okay, the blues is 1, the yellows are 3. So, you get 1 foot to 3 feet uh, over towards Gulfport, and in between Biloxi, you're going to get 3 feet of storm surge right in the canals. If you get more towards Bay St. Louis and all them, they're getting up to the, the big numbers. They're going to get up to the six feet level. So be aware of that. Also, way over here by Slidell and, and east of Slidell, you're going to get six feet of storm surge. That's a lot of storm surge. And it's still going to get hit way up here by Hammond. You're going to get a lot of it. You're going to get a lot of three feet on the west of Pontchartrain. And south of Pontchartrain, you're going to get three as well as six feet. I don't see a whole bunch of red. There's a couple areas by Slidell that show you you're in the red. So be, be careful. The red is 9 feet of storm surge if you are in those areas. Uh, it's not showing the, right here with the levee system because it's saying that they have their own levee system. So whatever storm surge they have, which is a lot of, of feet, it's going to go up to the edge of the storm surge. It's saying it's going to be okay. But I did find out that the levee system can only handle one inch of rain pumping out one inch of rainfall per hour. Now that's not storm surge. It's just regular rainfall. And this is pretty much a bowl locked in, so it's going to get flooded. Now, uh, after the first hour, it can only handle half an inch. So if it gets more than that, and it's going to be a lot of rainfall per hour, it's going to be flooding and going on. Now, here's your, your peak storm surge. You're, they're predicting 7 to 11 feet in that area. Uh, from this little piece here, it's 4 to 7 feet. But the main area is right here in the, in the curve of Louisiana, right in the boot is what I call it. Now, these are your rain uh, forecasts from one to five days, and it has moved up. You can see that the pink is now 15 inches of rainfall, and the dark right here is 20 inches. So right in this 15 inches, and then right here is 10 inches in the red, 6 inches in the orange, 4 inches in the yellow. Now, I want to make this point clear. If this, if this track shifts a little bit further west or a little bit further east, this pink is going to be in your area, and you're going to all of a sudden be in 15 inches versus 10 inches so be aware of that please 
Now, for your uh, excessive rainfall outlook, here here it is for your most um, most in intense part of it. You got through through Monday morning. You got the, the, the kind of minor compared to what you got on everything else. Tuesday is where you start to get into the slight and a little bit of the moderate. But on Wednesday, Wednesday morning through Wednesday is when you have a high risk of rainfall outlook in this whole area. I mean, 15 to 20 inches, that is really nothing to play around with, guys. Now, here's our storm now. The sun's starting to go down, so it's hard to see. But if you notice, right in this area right here and all in this area right here, it can't grow. And the reason behind that is because of the wind shear. Now, if you take a good look, you can see the dryness just beat on it and just dissipate the storm. That's why it's not bulking up. That's why it's not rapid intensifying right now. Matter of fact, I show that the outcomes are going to be way less than predicted. They're lucky if it gets to Cat 2 now. That's what we're showing so far. This is subject to change, but that is the newest one that I find. But you see how that dissipates? And it dissipates here. The wind shear is beating that thing up, and that's a good thing. We need that thing to go. Now, as far as the rainfall goes, if you look at a Euro, this is the rainfall that you're going to get just from the regular rainfall for the next three days. Next five days, it gets even worse. As you go up, they're going to get inches and inches of rain. But please, pause it. Look at your area because this is a lot of heavy rainfall. I'm showing 16 inches just for slide L alone. Now, that's the Euro model. The GFS model shows a little bit less, a little more localized uh, to the east, showing that the most rainfall would be around Gulfport and Pascagoula. Uh, Pascagoula is going to get 11 inches from what they have. But either way, it's going to be a lot of rainfall for them over there. Now, the NAM is showing us more towards uh, the New Orleans. New Orleans, you're going to get 13 inches of rainfall. That's according to the NAM model. So either way, this, this way shifts uh, east or west determines how much rainfall, just a slight little bit. I mean, it's literally like 30 miles. It will make a difference if you get 10 or 15 inches of rainfall. Now, you can get a good look here if you look at the vorticity. Okay, I went and put it on the GFS. I went to Pivotal Weather. And you put it on vorticity on 850 millibar height. Now, 850 millibar height is for 3,200 to 5,000 uh, feet above, uh, up in the air. Now, you can see it's very good formation. The problem is if you look at the 500 millibar, which is the 15,000, you can see that the wind shear is just killing it all in the middle right here and all on the west side. And it's just keeping it the east side loaded with the storms and north side loaded with the with north and east side loaded uh loaded with with the winds but it is choking it out at the higher levels so that's a good thing uh, you can see it here on the humidity you can see all the all the, the the precipitation all on the east side you can see the dryness coming in right here on the humidity but you can see as we go through these uh hours now this is going into the 12 and then it's going to be the 18 hour that it starts dissipating so right around the 24 hour it's all going out its way you get another center of circulation, and the only time it has for rapid intensification is from the 24-hour all the way until it hits land. That, that one piece there is the one time it has to intensify. But after it starts moving, it builds a wall around it. That's why this does a north to northeast push. That's why I don't see a more western push like the other models, like the Euro model was showing. I'm showing it's going to be right in this area. And this is the main reason. This, will, this won't let it breathe any further west. It stays with it all the way up as the system moves up. It just blocks it from going any further west. And then it goes out to the east. Now you can see it good here on, on the map when you look at the 500 millibar height for vorticity. You can see that it starts skipping around and then it gets weak immediately. I mean immediately. Now if you look at this map... You can see that you start to see something in this corner right here. Okay, we done had Paulette already pass by. That's the one that we're talking about. I guess it's going to be named Sally. But if you look at it, at the 90-hour mark, it's just coming into the Gulf. And I'm explaining why it's going to do that turn in just a second. When I skip all the way to 138, it's still right there in the Gulf. And then when I skip again all the way to 186, it is, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not the Gulf, the Atlantic Ocean. It is still right there. I mean, this is there for a long time, just spinning around. 234 hours it is still right there just a further a little bit further north and then in the end there's a big dip in a jet stream It's going to rip it apart you can hardly see it now and you go to the next day you see what i mean just ripping it apart shredded so that's pretty much what that what i'm showing is going to happen for that now i can show you that here on my model uh, if you look here you'll see paulette down here you'll see what's going to be teddy or whichever is going to be next or what they want to do with it but as Paulette comes around the north up here, 
this storm system will move westerly. And what makes this storm system take a north pull is when this paulette gets above top, they're almost uh, vertical with each other. This will create a ridge in the middle, like a pressure here, a pressure here. And then when it does this, it creates an empty ridge here and it pulls it up. And watch it here. You can watch. I'll just grab it a little bit quicker. You can see it. It does pull it up. And then it, after it passes, after it passes by, it don't have that ridge no more. So it takes a little more westerly push after that. But that one pull of, from Paulette, bringing it north, opening up the ridge, saves it from going to Puerto Rico. So that's a good thing. But then it, then it goes towards the east coast. It stays there for a while. And then it gets shredded by the, uh, the, by the jet streams. So that's what I do show out of all that, guys. I hope this was quick enough. hope this wasn't a 30-minute video. I tried being fast, even though it's kind of hard to get all the information in when you're rushing yourself. But God bless all you that's going through this. I, I am showing that there is a, a good possibility that this will go down to a tropical storm uh, right before it hits land. And that's what we're showing right now as far as the information. So that's a good thing. That's a really, really opposite direction of what have been talking about. And I think that that's where it needs to stay. The main problem with this is it's going to be a rain event. It's going to be a flooding event. It's going to be a power loss event from falling trees. It's going to be, I saw that it was going to be in that little, little land landfall area for about 24 to 36 hours of rainfall. So it's going to rain because it's moving slow as it's getting there. And it's going to be hitting all in the north and all in the east. Uh, north and east side loaded. So it's going to be hitting rain all along the coast of the Gulf Coast states all the way until it goes inland. And if it does go further west, that means that all the, all the wind on the east side is going to tear up on New Orleans as it passes by west. So we have to wait and see and see what's going on in the morning for anything further. But I, I am showing that this thing has a good chance of weakening. Now, I'm really intrigued by this Ezra chapter, so I'd like to read Ezra 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver, and with gold, and with goods, and with beasts, beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah, and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, with all of them whose spirit God had raised, to go up to the bit, go up to build the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were, were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver, with gold, with goods, and with beasts, and with precious things. Beside all that was willingly offered. Also Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar has brought forth of Jerusalem. And had put them in the house of his gods. Even those did Cyrus king of Persia bring forth by the hand of, of Mithradeth the treasurer. And numbered them unto Sheshbazar the prince of Judah. And this is a number of them. Thirty charges of gold. A thousand charges of silver. Nine and twenty knives. Thirty basins of gold. Silver basins of a second sort. Four hundred and ten. And other vessels a thousand. All the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400. And these did, not, did Shezbazar bring up with them and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hollowed in Jerusalem. No, I apologize. It went on to a different paragraph. I am sorry. All these did Shezbazar bring up with them of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry, this book has got some small words in it. It's a little hard, but I'm getting it. God bless you all today. I hope you all have a great night. I hope this thing does go down to a tropical storm. I am showing that that is uh, an option. 
All glory goes to God. Amen.